So let us model using CW. Again, we are going to model a sheet pile with water level on two sides. Open the GeoStudio program. Make sure you are using student license, which will be given here. And the next thing is to either open a new project or you could directly use any of the modules which are given on the left hand side. The button here tells you what type of paper size you would be using. I would recommend using Imperial, that is US units which is typically set to letter size. Now we are going to use CW module. So go and go ahead and click on CW. So this opens up a new model where you would be asked to enter the description of the project. So let us say I'm going to do CW analysis for sheet pile. I'm going to use steady state method because uh, we are not going to look into any other type of analysis. Now please note in student version you do not have option to choose any other analysis type. You could add the description And then we are make sure we are not checking the airflow. We are we do not want to use any airflow in the model. We are going to use all the soil as 100% saturated soil. Leave all the given attributions as it is. Convergence, time, advanced properties. You could check or uncheck, it really doesn't matter, but uh, let us check it. That is allow surface water to pond on surface mesh so that we know where the water is. Then you can close it. The first thing you want to do is save your file. So make sure this is not untitled. So I'm going to go ahead and save. The first thing we want to do is to set all the pages and grids and all other things. So go to set units and scale. Leave the grid as it is. Currently it is showing one foot by one foot. We want to display the grid. We also want to keep the snap to grid. You could also change the grid by using a command. Instead of 1 foot by 1 foot, you can make it to 0.5 feet, 0.25 feet or you could increase it to 5 feet, whatever you like. This just changes the grid size. Then we are also going to change other units and scale. Our problem is given is in US customary units. So we are going to use imperial units where we have lengths in feet time is in seconds, force is in pounds, you can use mass in pounds again. This is of course this we will not be using because we do not have any airflow. Unit weight of water is given, reference scale is 1 is to 200, do not change anything here. This is a two dimensional, we are not doing a, an axisymmetric case here and element thickness is 1. So leave it as it is, click apply. Now we are going to sketch the geometry. The first thing to sketch is to sketch the axis. Please note either you can use the sketch command or you could use there are icons and it will draw the sketches. Now as far as the geometry of this problem is considered, remember we have 90 plus 90 about 180 feet in length and we want to have uh, 50 feet tall geometry. So we need to have at least those dimensions. So let us go ahead and minimum x-axis is of course 0. This is where it will draw the axis. 
remember this is not drawing the geometry so for axis it starts at x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 in x axis maximum is let us say 200 and y axis maximum is 60 you could either check auto increment size or you could tell the computer which increments you want to you can change the font size then you could name the x and y axis the first is for the y axis that's where I'm going to plot the elevation and that is given in feet the label for x axis is the distance again that is also in feet Then the next thing is to sketch the geometry of the sheet pile. So now use, make sure you are using sketch command and not the draw command. So you could use either polylines or straight lines, one of the two, or you could use the combination. You could also use the icons to sketch the geometry. This is just sketching the geometry. So we can start with 0, 0 and If you want to terminate the command, you can always right click when you are drawing. You could also enter the coordinates of the points. So let us say we have drawn the field geometry. There is a sheet pile and then there is a water on two sides. Now this is just the geometry. We need to create regions and then apply the material properties. So we are going to create the regions of soil. So we start with 0, 0. We go all around by clicking on every junction of the soil region. Close the region by finally clicking back and 0, 0. The soil region will be highlighted. And you can now close the window. Now we need to apply the properties for this soil region. 
before that we need to key in the material property so click on key in materials and you can add a material this is the foundation soil you can change the color if you like the model which we are going to use is saturated only the saturated x conductivity is given as 1.64 10 to the power minus 4 the way you do it is the command is exponent minus 4 so 1.64 e minus 4 or by default it will take it in foot per second the ratio of x to y is 1 the hydraulic conductivity ratio rest other things just leave it by default whatever is given you can now close this window now this material needs to be applied to the soil so go ahead and either you can go to draw command and then material or you could click on the icon and just bring your cursor in the soil region and click there so you have now applied the soil and computer now knows the properties of the soil next thing we want to do is create mesh so we can go ahead and click on draw and then mesh properties by default it selected 4 foot by 4 foot mesh in student version we are not allowed to go over 500 elements so 4 foot by 4 foot mesh gives us 378 we can make it finer so that we can get more accurate results so with 3.5 feet by 3.5 feet mesh we get about 440 you could try with 3 foot but i suggest not to because that might exceed 500 element save the file as many times as possible while you are modeling so that you do not lose any of your work so now we have created the mesh the computer knows the material properties the other thing we need to do is now apply the boundary conditions so let us go ahead and we can either again click on draw boundary conditions or you can click on icon the boundary conditions here are going to be the known conditions for the upstream and downstream total heads because we know those two are the constant heads and we know how much constant head is there on upstream and downstream. So click on the hydraulic boundary condition and we need to key in those boundary conditions. So we are going to create new boundary condition. So click on add new boundary condition let us call it as upstream total head now we are going to use the total head boundary there are multiple type of boundaries we are going to use the total head boundary head means total head and that is going to be constant for the upstream side by default the CW takes 0, 00 line as the datum so the total head on upstream is 45 feet we can choose the color and now we can similarly create another boundary for the downstream 
So either you could add another boundary condition or you could just clone it. And we can rename that as downstream total head. Again, a different color if you want to use. And downstream total head is 35 feet. So now we have two different boundary conditions. We are going to apply that to the two sides of the soil. So downstream side, we are going to use the downstream boundary condition. So select the downstream boundary condition and bring the cursor near the downstream and click to apply the boundary condition. Then select the upstream boundary condition. Bring the cursor near upstream and click on upstream. So now the boundary conditions have been applied to the upstream ground level and downstream ground level. You can close the window. The last thing we need to do before running the program is to draw the flux sections. So we need to find out how much water is coming out from this under the sheet pile. So let us take a cross section under the sheet pile. In order to do that, click on draw flux sections. Again, you could use the draw command. You can use flux sections. This is number one. You could take about 10 cross sections. But for this problem, we just need one. So approximately somewhere in the middle, you can draw a flux section. right click to terminate the command. Now the geometry and the properties are all drawn. Now the computer is ready to run the program. So click start in the solve manager. So the computer runs the program and gives you the flow net. The color contours are nothing but the equipotential line contours or contours are equal potentials. The arrows show the direction of the flow. You can always turn off the arrows if you do not like. You can also draw the flow lines by clicking on view flow paths. can draw the flow paths by clicking on draw flow paths we can also view the discharge or Q by clicking on the blue arrow of the flux section So this completes the tutorial on how to run the program and how to find the discharge. The next part is to find the exit gradient and draw the pore pressure at certain locations. So let us start viewing the results. We know the discharge has been given as 0.000 6 to 1 cubic foot per second. Remember, this is only two dimensional. So, this is cubic foot per second per foot length of the sheet pile. So, if you have been given say 100 foot length in the third dimension, you need to multiply this number by 100.
in view results and information if we want to view the exit gradient bring your cursor near the element which will give you the exit region click on that it will give you the properties of that region xy gradient there will give you the exit gradient which is 0 0.310 in this case we can also view the graph of the pore water pressures so you can click on graph you can add graph and we want to take a cross section and at the nodes of the rectangles we will be finding the pore pressure so keep the pore pressure as it is we can use either the total head or the pore water pressure or pressure head i would like to choose pore pressure because i want it in terms of pound per square foot versus we can choose the distance x coordinate y coordinate and so on and so forth so i am going to choose the y coordinate then click on set locations and select locations where you want to find out the pore pressure. So let us say I want to find out pore pressures on these points. So I selected those points and then I select show graph. Now this window will show the pore water pressure at those selected points only thing now remember it shows pore water pressure on y axis and on x axis it will show the y coordinates this is not how we typically like to see in geotechnical engineering so we want to then export it to excel so that we can view it as y on the y axis or the y coordinates or rather depth on the y axis and then on x-axis we need to see pore water pressure this can be done by two different ways either you can right click and you can say copy graph data or you could directly export the csv file so it will ask the location wherever you want to show save it you can save it it will open in excel and now you can plot or you can process the data as you like this completes the tutorial using cw thank you